I am Anil Kumar sharing with you questions from my subscribers. Let me thank all the subscribers for posting questions and participating actively on my YouTube channel. The question here is based on finding rules for the given data. So we have two questions here. So let me write this as question number one, which is find explicit rule for the given data x and y values are given. When x is 2, 7, 3, 11, 25, corresponding y values are 7, 12, 8, 16, 30. In question number 2, it is similar question. We have to write explicit rule for the given data. The data is, for x values are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, y values are 1, 7, 17, 31, 49. I'd like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now in question number one, you will see that there are a lot of missing values and they are not arranged properly. However, if you carefully observe, you will see that for 2, the x value of 2, y is 7, for 7 it is 12, for 3 it is 8, 11, 16. 25, 30. So what we see here is that if I add 5 to the x value, I get the y value. 25 plus 5 is 30. 11 plus 5 is 16. 3 plus 5 is 8. 7 plus 5 is 12. And 2 plus 5 is 7. And therefore, I can write the relation y equals to x plus 5. Now, if you can write a relation y equals to x plus 5, we say that is explicitly written. So, y has been written in terms of x. So, that becomes the solution for question number 1. Correct? Now, let's look into question number 2. Here, we have x values which are increasing by 1, but the y values are increasing by much greater number. So definitely, it does not represent a linear function, right? So it could be any other polynomial function. Now, for finding equation of such information given to us, we use finite difference. So uh, let me use the right side here to explain what I'm trying to do, and then we'll find out the solution. So what we are going to do here is adopt finite difference method. So in finite difference, we have to arrange x values in a particular order, increasing by 1 is the best way. And then we find y2 minus y1. So let's find y2 minus y1. And first time when we do it, we'll call it first finite difference, which I am writing as delta 1. So treat this as first finite difference. Right? This will be referred to as first finite difference. Right? If first finite difference is constant, then we are expecting a linear function. So let's find the first finite difference. 7 minus 1, that is what we are going to do. 7 minus 1 is 6. 17 minus 7 is 10, 31 minus 7, 11 take away 7 is 4, so we are left with 14, 49 take away 31, 9 take away 1 is 8, 4 take away 3 is 1, so we get 18, definitely as expected, it is not a linear function. So now let's find the second difference. So second difference is, repeat this process. Now we will find the second difference. So we will find consecutive numbers difference. Now we will do 10 minus 6, right? We can do 10 minus 6, which is 4. 14 minus 10 is 4. 18 minus 14 is also 4. So second finite difference is constant for us, right? Since it is constant, we know that we are working with a quadratic function. That means it is a quadratic function. Where explicitly we can write y as 
ax square plus bx plus c. So that becomes the equation. Now we need to find the value of a, b and c. There are three unknowns. You can use three values from here. Solve three equations and get your answer. That is one way of doing it. The second way is, uh, in fact, if you know the trick, which is we can find the leading coefficient a if we know the finite difference. Now, since the second finite difference is constant, so the formula basically is nth finite difference over n factorial is a. In our case, we know it is the second finite difference constant. So we'll define, divide 4 by 2 factorial. Factorial means, well, let me tell you that also, what factorial means, okay? Some of you may not know it. So, and it's always good to know these uh, nice methods. Uh, factorial uh, means something like this. n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So keep on decreasing the numbers till you get to times 2 times 1, right? So example, 5 factorial will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 80, right? Sorry, 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60, 60 times 2 is 120. So likewise, you can calculate the factorial, right? But 2 factorial is just 2, so what do we get here? We get the value of a as 4 over 2, which is 2. So we have saved a lot of time by doing so. We can now work with only two equations to find b and c. Perfect. So let's use uh, the values which are, uh, let's say 1, 1 is a nice value to take. So we'll take 1, 1 and we'll take 2, 7. So these are the two values which we will take, get two equations. So if I use 1 for y and 1 for x, my equation now becomes 1 equals 2. I'm using 2 for a, right? So we get 2 times 1 square plus b times 1 plus c. That is to say, the equation is, uh, this is uh, 2, right? So we can bring it on this side. So we have minus 1 equals to b plus c. So what I did was, I brought this 2 to the left side. Minus 1 equals to b plus c. So that is our equation number 1. Now let me use the second point. The second point is 2, 7. y value is 7. I am using 2 this time. So 2 times 2 square plus b times 2 plus c. And that gives me the equation. 2 square is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 7 minus 8 is again minus 1. This time again. And we have here 2b plus c. So let's call this as our equation number 2. Perfect. Let me move this page a bit on this side. Okay. Now, from these two equations, we can do equation uh, 1 minus 2. So if I do equation 1 minus equation 2, what do I get? C and C cancel away. 1 and 1 cancel away. So what we get here is 0 equals to minus B or B equals to 0. So we know the value of B, which is 0. Substituting B as 0 in any one of these equations, let it be 1, we can find what C is. So if B is 0, so if I write B equals to 0, then C equals to minus 1. Substituting all these values in our equation, we get y equals to 2x squared minus 1. Do you see that? So that is how we can actually find the equation relating to data. Well, I've done a few shortcuts here simply because I didn't want to run over space. Uh, but I hope there were simple steps left in between which you can fill in. Uh, so that should not be very difficult. But I hope you understand the process and those of you who were not aware of this formula, how to find leading coefficient when you know the finite difference, that's a very important formula to work with. Feel free to write your suggestions and comments. Hope you like it. Share and subscribe to my videos. Thank you and all the best.